Good afternoon. I'm Naresh Khanna of Packaging South Asia, an Indian printer and publisher. And this is the 23rd of December, 2020. A fairly difficult year, I must say. But I am pleased to have a visitor finally, someone who's come to our office after a long time. But Karan Tadwar is an old friend. And he has uh, recently, I think in the past year, been promoted to director of sales for ESCO, for the Indian subcontinent. And I'll ask Karan to share with us, what has this year been like? How has it been to be a salesman without being able to travel? How have you convinced people? How has business been? What is the industry like? What are some of your successes? And what are some of the challenges you faced? Thank you. Thank you, Nadeshi, for having me here. Uh, as you spoke about 2020, you know, as one of my friends was telling me, it's finally coming to an end. That's how 2020 has been. But uh, I think overall, uh, if, if I talk about the packaging industry as a whole uh, and uh, for Esco's business, it's been a, it's been a checkered year. Uh, started uh, with a lot of uh, bullish sentiments, uh, but as the pandemic uh, you know, came up and uh, uh, the lockdowns happened, uh, think things kind of uh, stopped completely. And uh, one good thing that happened, I think the first thing, the realization, the real realization was, let's accept it as the new normal. So the new normal uh, was accepted. People started using, uh, you know, uh, the different kind of tools to communicate, different uh, kind of uh, structures were built to ensure that uh, the business continuity happens. And that's, uh, you know, what also uh, ESCO implemented. So we utilized a lot of uh, new tools like uh, Microsoft Teams and things like that to uh, communicate to our customers, uh, you know, a lot of remote activities, video calls, uh, all those things happened. So that was one thing that I think everyone in the industry implemented uh, and kind of got into that groove of the new normal. Overall, the uh, industry, I think, I think packaging uh, was kind of immune to this uh, pandemic situation uh, and one one important factor that happened that a lot of bulk buying happened in the industry you know so the people went to the markets they went to they wanted to buy as much as possible just to stop it so a lot of packaging had to happen at that time also the packaging came up as uh, you know as a factor of health and hygiene you know so packed good uh, pharma uh, you know the, the medicines and other things so they have to be there in the market all the time. So that was another good thing that happened with packaging. So a lot of uh, pharma packaging that developed a lot, a lot of uh, new things happened there. A lot of uh, food packaging, you know, anything that used to be sold open earlier, they, they got packed and that uh, they went into the shelf. So that's another good thing that happened. And uh, as I have been talking to a lot of my customers, uh, having a dip in the Q2 of uh, this year, they are practically back at uh, the pre-pandemic uh, or pre-lockdown, I would say pre-lockdown uh, level of the business, which is pretty good. Okay. I see. I, I, we've been talking and Karan has told me that there has been quite a bit of uh, uptake on the automation tools and on the software tools and that includes the automation tools and the other enterprise tools. Can right. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, uh, you know, what... Uh, uh, the way the industry is transformed and the way I have seen, you know, packaging, a lot of uh, art has been actually, you know, transformed towards science now. And uh, and and everyone uh, in the in the packaging supply chain, they realize that having the right technology, the right software and systems uh, working around it, implemented around it, will make uh, the entire, you know, system much more efficient. Uh, and, and that's where... Uh, the ESCO systems like automation engine or our online collaboration and uh, packaging manual systems like web center they did exceedingly well this year so a lot of our customers they, they implemented automation engine just to ensure that you know the entire pre-press is much more efficient people working out of home have access to those systems remotely and many of the tasks which were you know, more of intelligent tasks where a human intervention is not required can be performed by these systems and also the online systems where Multi-locational uh, customers, they could collaborate easily, they can you know, manage their uh, projects easily. So that's where Web Center again came up as, as a very, very handy tool. Another one thing that I want to add is, uh, you know, with this uh, no-touch policy that happened, 
one thing uh, that excel uh, is also the 3d uh, technology from esco you know where people could actually communicate uh, in a, in a 3d structure a 3d structure of packaging in any vertical any kind of packaging could be created and communicated to their end customers they could you know view it and operate that, it that was your studio software that the studio software so the entire studio umbrella of our software that also did exceedingly well this year and and we see that that trend continuing uh, further and i believe you have another software which is uh, also friendly like studio software uh, share and approve yes that share approve so that share and approve is also you know a very easy to use on the cloud system where you create a 3d and if you want to send it to your customer rather than using the generic uh, emails mm. you send it over a over a web browser okay and uh, the customers over over a, a pc a general web browser or even a mobile app they can actually visualize how the packaging will look like in 3d they can do rotation can and everything rotation they can you know See. review it annotate it approve it reject it have visual signatures in there so no contact policy being taken care by this and it's browser based they don't need to have any kind of a uh, uh, 3d reader uh, or pd uh, pdf reader right. everything will happen in the browser okay it happens in chrome or it happens in safari or whatever yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. I believe you've also had a very good year in selling uh, uh, digital imaging engines, right. your output devices. Right. How is how is what is the trend there? So Flexo, uh, you know, uh, the Flexo uh, printing as as it is was uh, growing very well in India, and you know that you know a lot of uh, things are happening in, in terms of flexible packaging. It's the transition is happening from uh, Grego to Flexo. So that that trend was there, and that fortunately that continued further. a uh, couple of trends that we could see and that's where you know our uh, cdi technology the the flexo imager that we have they did exceedingly well again this year one uh, we see that the, uh, the the top level trade shops or converters they um, invested in the better technologies in the newer technologies that they came up with especially the crystal uh, uh, you know uh, umbrella of uh, systems that we have the crystal cdi the crystal xps that we have which is a breakthrough technology uh sabidel is printed back the uv led exposure which takes your uh, flexo plate making consistency and quality to the next level so a lot of uh, those technologies uh, you know what was uh, bought uh, apart from that the other thing that we could uh, see that is the suppliers are getting closer to the final packaging buyers so tier 2 customers tier 2 uh, in the tier 2 cities they bought these uh, flexo imagers okay uh, and also you know uh, probably you know the uh, uh, the the uh, i would say the upper end of analog print shops they also realized that for them to survive in this game digital is the only mode they okay. have to do go it go it with the, uh, a digital system otherwise it's very difficult to survive so that means the overall the trend for flexo growth yes. it continues exactly. and the trend from analog to digital flexo right. continues and the trend from the big metros to the tier 2 and the tier 3 continues that's another one trend that i have seen is uh, you know the converters the converters also are realizing that having uh, a pre press and a plate making system in house can give them a lot of control a lot of control for them to innovate and print as per you know what their uh, customers want so that's another trend that we've seen and uh, there's a lot of converters also Who gone in house in terms of their uh, pre flexo pre press and plate making system? Okay, thank you, Karan. That's wonderful. Good news. So, what do you see in the coming year? The coming year, I see the the trend continuing. I uh, I was just uh, you know talking to one of my colleagues that uh, the next year we are looking at minimum uh, 20 25 percent growth, uh, which is uh, you know wonderful. I think in terms of uh, packaging and overall uh, overall business. So that's uh, that's what we foresee now. That's that's very good. That's news from the ground up, news from the actual person who is out there on the front line, and that is also our perception that by and large, packaging, packaging and labels have bucked the trend of the economy. That packaging and labels have been a sector which has been surprisingly strong, and which is still building capacity. We see huge capacities coming online in 2021 also. Thank you, Karan. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you.